In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a very high filtration mask using non-woven polypropylene reusable shopping bags. This is superior to using cotton and we'll do it today without the need for sewing using just four basic tools. You may have seen the video I made about this on my main channel and based on feedback I gave a bit too much information on the variety of techniques that can be used to make the face mask. So in this video it'll be very straightforward so you can quickly and easily follow along. All right. So there's only four tools you need. An iron, hot glue gun, uh, a pen, and scissors. That's your tools, that's it, just the four. You can get away with just those four. There's better ways of doing different things. I'm not gonna talk about it, I'm gonna stay focused. We're not gonna go, we're not building fume extractors. We don't need a fume extractor. That was because I was doing a lot of experimenting and burning lots of stuff by accident. Oh, it's mainly the hot wire cutter that was making the smoke. The iron's not actually that bad getting sidetracked. Now, the material you need. It is non-woven spun bond polypropylene, but even better is non-woven polypropylene uh, that is melt blown because it is it filters better. It's harder to get. So what you'll likely encounter is uh, this material, which is the most common source that you'll find is uh, reusable shopping bags. But it's, it's literally like you find it in the craziest places. I even found it as the lining on the bottom of our chairs in the dining room. I talk more about that in the previous video. But so we're gonna work with this shopping bag. Now you might be thinking, does air actually go through it? It does, there's little dots all over it. The more sparse the dots are, that means the more air that goes through it because where the dots are, air doesn't go through the actual dots, it goes around it. So if, it's, uh, if you're picking between two different materials and one has dots that are more sparse, go for that one shopping bag. Then the other materials you need is braided elastic. This is six millimeter. Need some foam. I've got this from an exercise mat. It's really soft. Something with an adhesive back is good. That's double-sided tape. And electrical cable. This is three core. Bends. An alternative to this is pretty much anything that bends and you think you could stick to the polypropylene. So I like this because it's flat, sticks easily. If you buy it at the hardware shop, it's about a dollar a meter. Here's some here. That's what it looks like. There's three wires in it. You can cut it with scissors. Probably not the best for scissors, but you can do it. There you go. You'll need the template that you can download from my website. Cut out your template. You don't have to be that accurate because, because you can trim the shape of the mask after anyway. Actually, I forgot to mention, on the template, there's a scale there. You, can, you should check that with your ruler to make sure it's printed right. When you print it, just select actual size on your printer. After you've cut out your template, grab your scissors and then just scratch a little hole where the elastic indicators are. So you can fit a pen through there so you can mark that on your fabric. Wash this beforehand if you can. So you want to cut the bag into some usable panels just so it's easier to work with. If there's any printing on it, you can't use those sections because air doesn't go through there. So just chop it into a few panels. Now with these bags, uh, these are about 100 to 150 grams per square meter. Uh, so that's how this stuff is measured as far as its thickness goes. And you can get thicker and thinner. This is the most common thickness though. Okay, we're gonna use multiple layers of these cut out from the template. So, how many layers do we need? That's a great question. Can't answer that because I can't test it and your material will be different to what I've got here, just slightly. But I've based this on the N95 masks, yet have gone slightly thicker, allowing for the fact that their filters have more, they're more efficient because of some of the additives they use and things like uh, static electricity. So we're going for more diffusion, which is basically a slightly thicker mask. Remember, it's not an N95 that we're making. Don't misquote me. It is an approximation, and based on the material I have here, I know that this will be four to five layers. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go for five layers, because once you've made it, you could actually trim one of the layers away if you're finding it, it, it's a bit too thick or it's a bit too warm from excessive humidity building up in the mask. So we're gonna be going for five layers on this mask, and it's just a case of working out where you can fit them in with the material that you have. And then it's time to get tracing. Now this whole tracing and cutting out the material thing is a lot quicker if you've got a hot wire foam cutter. Don't wanna talk about alternatives though, but check out the previous video. One of the questions that I'll just slip in here was, can you breathe through this material? And 
you can. And the easiest way to know that you can is because you can. You can. So on one of the layers that you trace out, which will be the, the outside of your mask, uh, just dot in the elastic points. I only have to do it on the one. That's good. There we go. We've traced out five. Now with your scissors tool, you can cut the mask shape pieces out. Now you just need to stack all of your layers together. I like to have the, the smoother side facing your skin, unless you line it with something that just feels better on your skin in the first place. And then you want your one on top that has the elastic markings. The top is, you know, that'll be the outside. So stack them up, stack your layers, try and get them as aligned as possible. It is now time to iron. All right, so you wanna get your layers nice and straight before you start. Okay, so the temperature on the iron, it's basically full, slightly under, a couple of clicks under. Get some scrap, uh, make it the same amount of layers thick, stack your test pieces up, uh, and always wait until your iron gets up to temperature. They normally have a little light on there. But you just wait over there. We'll be welding you in a minute. This is best done in a well-ventilated area. Now, technique for this, you want to lay the iron over, so you want to get a bit of an angle like that kind of angle. You're almost using the edge of the iron as a hot knife, so you're not, you're not going flat over it. Flat just doesn't work. You need to go slowly with a fair bit of pressure. So you're going at this kind of pace. You can see straight away if your top layer is cutting because it starts to raise up. If you see it start to cut through the top layer, push the iron towards the outer edge of the mask and you can save it. The other problem you've got with an iron is when you do set the temperature, temperature doesn't actually just drop and stay consistent. It's kind of always going up and down. You can see it as the light turns on and off. And when that light comes on, it's normally a lot hotter for a few seconds and can cause issues. So be ready to slide your iron to the edge of the mask if you see it come on at that point so you can save your, your work. So you're really using the back corner. You're not, it's not like an ice skate. You're not like on that side of the iron, it's that back corner because if the fabric's touching it for too long and you're sliding down the iron, it's just gonna overheat it every time. When you do your actual mask, don't inspect it straight away. Just let it cool down first because just by looking at it and moving around, you can ruin your join. Finally worked out the pace and the heat. So as an example, don't get frustrated, like that's how many tests I've done just to get used to what this fabric needs to get it to bond all the way through. The last one I've done uh, is what I was after, which is a nice shiny bead down the back. Hasn't quite cut all the way through, but it's nice and thin. You hold it up to the light, there's a nice transparency. And if you look at the layers, when they're cool, don't do it when it's, when it's warm, uh, they're all stuck together. Five layers, yep, all fused to the back. And that was a single pass, that one as well. So you've still got that chance to do a second pass with the iron. You get about two or three goes at it before the plastic becomes brittle. But I'm just gonna try and melt a few of the edges, a bit like welding real metal, just to see if we can tack it in place so all the layers aren't moving around all over the shop. I'm just gonna hit it, hit it like that. Just chop a bit away in a few sacrificial places, just to see if that'll Keep it together. So with the mask template, I've allowed a fair bit of excess around the edge. So if you mess up, even if you mess up a whole world all the way around, you might be able to salvage it. The mask might get a bit smaller, might be more suitable for a kid size. But yeah, you've got a bit of allowance there. So that's why I'm not too worried doing this either. So when you're focusing on the join, if this stays together, this will make it a bit easier. So I was after, this is holding them all together. All right, new technique. Bit of a pre-tack. a pre -tack. We're ready to do our main weld around the edge. Now when we do that, we're just doing this outside edge here. We're gonna leave this middle V part for now. Just gonna jump straight in there. Now I'm probably better to slightly underdo this than overdo it because you can do another pass if you need to, all right. So sometimes I just do a bit of a bit of a touch just to see how the iron, see how the iron's feeling. Sometimes when you first contact it, the iron's actually a bit hotter than what it will be once you get going. It's just how it how it is. 
it's a bit too hot at the moment, okay. And we're cruising around the edge of the mask, kind of steering it as we go. If it slides off like that, that's cool. That's the direction you want the pressure to be in as you go anyway. And we're not making these for aesthetics. Okay, if you get a bit of a bow wave forming in front of the iron, just bail out. Press the fabric back down and you're back up and running carving some plastic. I like to visualize it a bit like skiing behind the boat, like you're hooking that back edge in, nice hard carve, like this. So I think my pace is a bit too quick there. Now I'm starting to get worried that the other camera can't see what I'm doing, so I'm gonna bail right there. There we go, that's looking pretty good. I wanna turn it over and see if it's working. You know, resist that temptation because you could ruin your join, but diving straight back in. Let's keep going. Riding that back corner. Slow down a bit too much there, so it could be a bit too thin. Let's see how we go. Okay, Irons has turned itself back on, so I need to be ready for that burst of heat. Just commentating ironing things. On next week's show, how to iron a pair of pants. All right, finish this last edge. Now, I reckon, based on what I'm seeing, that this has been a bit too quick, my pace, so the bottom layer probably hasn't quite fused, so I probably need to do another pass. But yeah, looks like that. It doesn't matter if it's a bit rough. You can trim it up later. All right, let's let it cool down a bit. I want to flip it over. Don't do it. Don't do it yet. Let it cool down. Let it cool down. Yeah, so the iron was a bit too flat in places. It should be more of a hard V. Okay, let's check it out. Oh, not too bad. Not too bad. Bit of a shiny bead around places, but I can see where it's gone a bit too... Uh, not enough pressure. The ending there was quite, quite fast. So then we just do another pass. Bit more pressure generally a bit quicker on your second pass because the material's uh, a bit thinner now. I'm riding it on the edge a little bit more because that top layer is a bit more protected now because it's, um, it's not all fluffed up. If you do slightly go all the way through, that's okay because it is actually the edge of the mask and it's not gonna be a factor, but if you put a hole in that top layer, it's a bit it's a bit different. If you put a hole in the weld itself, it's okay because air can't skip in through the edge because they're already joined together. Let it cool down, let it cool down. Cool it off. It's looking good, it's shiny. I think the bond is a little bit light but I mean, the good news is we have a bra. So then the best way to know if it's a winner, just hold it up to the light and it should be a nice thin transparency. So the parts where it's not transparent or translucent, uh, you need to do, you need to press it a bit more. So I've got a bit of a mix here and see which bits I need to redo. Hit that with a bit more pressure on a bit more uh, edge of the iron. All right, pretty happy with that last pass. So we've got a good join. Has gone through in a few places, which is okay if you can look at the edge of it and you can't see the different layers of the mask, then that's sealed up. Now you can trim it. If you're worried your backing isn't holding up or hasn't sealed properly, um, you know, the hot wire is better in this situation, but I'm just thinking you can use your iron as a way to cut the excess off. Leaving your existing weld, just crank the heat all the way up and then do another pass around the outer edge. So that'll trim the outside off. It won't look as neat as if you trim it with scissors, but let's give that a go. Yeah, so doing it this way gives you that second chance um, at making sure it's welded through. 
Doing it this way too might generate a bit more fumes than what the weld did. So ventilated space. Just trimming with an iron. So the iron now is on full heat, just using it as a hot knife to cut that excess off. So if you do cut it with scissors, you don't want to be trimming on that weld line as well. Don't do that because then it's just going to fail. You want to go a bit outside it. So that's almost cut, just missed a bit there. Yeah, so this is the first time I've trimmed it with the iron instead of the hot knife. It's not too bad actually. The it's not as shabby as I thought it would look. Okay, so doing it with the iron like this, um, finding, yeah, don't use the back corner as much as you use the edge of it, which is what we don't want to do for the weld, but it is working awesome for just chopping straight through it, giving a fairly tidy edge for what it is, which is a welded mask that isn't sewn. So then you want to feel the back edge, see if there's any sharp bits, deal with them. I'm going to trim it up with scissors a little bit, but not all the way though, because I like having that extra weld around the outside for a bit of, bit of security. Uh, so I'm not cutting in too far at all. Just a, just a little bit of a trim to get some of those thicker bits off. And this I'm just doing for aesthetics now. This is um, unnecessary. Back layer is bonded. Check it with your, your fingers is pushing against it to make sure it's sealed all the way around, uh, and it feels good, so it's not going to scratch, scratch your face. I'm pretty happy with that. Obviously the aesthetics aren't as good as if you sewed it, but this is the purpose of this is not sewing because of the problems that come with sewing, like needing a sewing machine and putting sewing holes in it. All right, now we can do the front seam. I've already pre-tacked it with the iron just to make the layers hold together. Then we're folding the mask in half like so and we want to get those two bits to line up so the heat's going to be the same I prefer to start from the bottom because it's important that these two line up uh, so you get a nice seal under your chin the top bit doesn't matter as much you can kind of just bulldoze the iron through that and it uh, is normally all right so with this one we have to flip it over and do both sides and kind of just see how we go generally uh, so lots of pressure and we're going from the bottom heaps of pressure Again if you're wearing gloves, it's easier because you can push it down if you make any holes anywhere I almost slightly did there, but we can fuse that Fuse that closed so there's no air leaks flip it over this time. We're going from the top uh, and we're just getting straight into it. Don't overcook it. All right, now let it cool down before you mess with it. Otherwise you ruin your join. Okay, not too bad. It's harder to tell now because you don't get as much transparency because we have uh, 10 layers we've joined now. Now, like I said in the other video, I prefer to sew this front one, if you can sew it, and then melt the plastic to seal it after. But this is a no sewing mask, so we are going to just plastic weld it. And then if we think the join's a bit dodgy, having a look in the middle, we're going to fill it with glue. Okay, sometimes at the top of the nose, you can get little holes there because the fabric bubbles up, so make sure you fuse that. Okay, cool it off. Cool it off before you look inside it, because, uh, yeah, you might make a perfect join fail. The front seam's a hard one, so have a go at plastic welding it. If you're not liking how it's going, it's fine, doesn't matter. Just give it Give it a crack. Uh, this one hasn't really worked out. There's a few holes in there. I've had some time, sometimes it turns out great. Sometimes it's a bit of a fail like this one, but it doesn't matter. We just run a bead of hot glue through there 
and it seals it up. And then we just melt down the front of the seam just for a bit of extra strength. So let's do that. Our final tool, the hot glue gun. All right, we'll start in the middle. And then we just fill it up with hot glue. So pre-welding it. Doing that pre-weld, uh, yeah, obviously keeps it all in place. So we can now do this hot glue bit. Nice, generous bead of hot glue to seal up your front seam. Sealing up that bit, there we go. Gotta make sure it's completely sealed up. That's important for this one. So just, you know, give it a good inspection, squeeze it together a bit, move it around, make sure uh, there's no, no air gaps. So that one could be sketchy. I'll just chuck a bit more in there. And as this is cooling, I'm holding this one fanned out. So this is a nice flat seal uh, on your face. After you've done your bead of hot glue, leave the hot glue gun on. We're gonna use it again in a minute. Just trim the front of your weld, just to make it look nice and parody. Nice parody mask. There we go, front of the mask is all trimmed up. Now to seal it, we're just gonna run it up the front of the iron uh, like this, just to, as a final seal. Just a bit of backup, the hot glue's got it, but um, just in case it doesn't. I forgot to put in the nose foam rubber. You can still do it now, it's just easy to do it when it's, um, when it's flat. So you peel the double-sided tape off, stick the foam in there. Forgot that bit. Do you need nose foam uh, rubber? Yes, yes you do. It's very important to make it uh, seal around your nose. And it stops any sharp bits of the plastic touching your face as well. So I have stuck that in there now. It's easy to do it earlier. Yeah, when this is flat. All right, that nose foam rubber, about nine centimeters long, 10 centimeters. Remember there's a scale on the template. You can use that. So then you want some elastic. Uh, you need two pieces, 28 centimeters long each, which is uh, 11 inches. Now in my other video, I give different ways of mounting the elastic but we are going to do a hot glue gun. So then yeah, you just use your, use the dots that are there. Flatten out the material. Don't let it bubble up when you put the hot glue on it so the hot glue doesn't uh, melt a hole in it. Now, again, this is easier with gloves if you're gonna press it down. This is a dob of hot glue. Get your elastic. Gonna plant that in there. Woo, Bernie. Yeah, my other technique I do in the video is way better than hot glue. There's one bit stuck on there. That was pretty messy, that one. And this one will probably be the same. All right, spin your mask around. Then we're gonna glue the other side. Don't cross them over. Make sure the bottom one stays at the bottom. Then make sure the top stays at the top. And gonna glue it down. And you want to try and do it so there's no uh, twists in it as well. Which is just uh, just to be fancy. All right, glue that down. With the hot glue done, let it cool down heaps before you try and put any pressure on it. All right, the elastic is glued. Uh, we can now do the nose bridge wire. Once you've got your bit of wire and you've cut its length, 10 centimeters, which is the scale on the template, which you can, you can use, you need to roughen up the back. You can even do that just rubbing it on concrete out the back, just to make the plastic nice and rough so the hot glue sticks to it nicely. You wanna pre-bend it a little bit, probably about that much. Then with your hot glue gun, just gonna run a bead along the back of it. And then not too close to the edge, um, probably about there. And then get some even pressure on it. Yeah, don't go too close to the edge uh, because it can affect glasses if you're wearing them like safety glasses or just regular glasses. And then you wanna hold that for, for a while until you can, until it seems like it's sticking and let it cool down. 
With the nose bridge wire glued on and cooled down, you're pretty much done. The only thing to do now is chuck it in a dryer for about 15 minutes with the heat turned completely off, and that gets rid of any of the glue and plasticky smells. And it also gets rid of uh, some of this loose crap that's getting around your workspace that is, you know, might stick to it, makes it uh, nice and clean. Then you can put it in a snap lock bag. I find the best way to put it on is to hold it like that, dip your chin in it, bring the bottom elastic over, then you grab the top bit of elastic and that goes on top of your head. And you bend the bridge nose wire down so there's no air gaps. That is a good fit. You need to be clean shaven, technically, to wear a mask uh, properly. And yeah, so you just wanna see if there's any, if it's for yourself, you can test fit it, obviously. Um, see if there's any sharp bits of plastic that you need to trim off that might be irritating, or whoever you're providing it to, you can just tell them to do it. Just once they've put it on, uh, if there's anything bothering them, they can trim it up a little bit. I hope this video was helpful. Feel free to check out the other video I did on my main channel where I demonstrate some alternative methods. If this was helpful, think about subscribing and check out my social media for any updates on this design too. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.